Hello everybody, thought I would provide you with a quick update on things as they stand as of today, 23rd of June, and just to go through assignments with you for professional music production, I'll also be going through the immersive audio assignment with you later in a separate video, but um, I just want to go through these assignments with you again just to make sure that you're clear on what it is that's being asked and of course if I upload this then you can always go back and just remind yourself what it is that was uh, required for each of these assignments. So let's begin by looking at professional music production. And if you recall, we said that the due date was going to sort of fall in line with what's happening uh, on other modules, on other courses and across the faculty. And that is to have two due dates, one being Friday the 4th of September, which is the due date for your final major project also, or to allow you to submit much later, uh, the beginning of December on the 4th of December. And that was to sort of allow you the time in the studio that you required, if you required actual studio use, that you could come in and you could spend from September to December working in the studio. But thing, th as things have mo moved on, I've got more of an idea of how things are gonna look and we know that the studios won't be open before September and that when they do open, I think without going into too much detail, they won't open as we are used to you know, working in our studios. So for example, there, there might be no unsupervised practice. They might not be open as long as they've been open. You might have to do a risk assessment and you know all of these things that we we haven't been used to before might be in place uh, when we return so it's you know it won't be impossible going into the studio but i'm thinking probably for this assignment my advice would be to try and complete something that you're able to do at home and that's why i've changed the assignment brief slightly i mean it still meets the learning outcomes it's still the same module but I've just changed the length of the portfolio so that you can actually submit work that you've already got. And rather than go into a studio and make the portfolio up to 20 minutes, you can submit 10 minutes, which um, as I understood when I uh, sort of, when I proposed this idea, most of you said, oh, that's okay, we've got 10 minutes. I mean, 10 minutes is two or three songs, isn't it? So, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not 100% convinced that, you know, when we go back, will have the the facilities as as we knew them so my advice my strong advice would be to try and get work finished and submitted by friday the 4th of september or before you can always submit before uh, and that means that you'll have that module in and done and finished and completed and then if you wanted to go into the studio and make use of the studio time there's two things that could happen here there could be that that period between September and December you you use to come in to work on projects which you then intend to submit. So if you like, given a, a period where you can update your project. So, you know, if you submit in September, you might decide, oh, would be better if I got into the studio and I could update my project, make it sound better. But I think... The, the way I'm thinking about it is that you would submit the project, you would get your grade and that would go through the system. But at a later date that the, the university would, uh, and, I, and I haven't spoke to my colleagues about this, but I think that this is the right thing to do. The university would allow you to still come in and use the facilities, um, e you know, e even if it's not for assignment work as such, so that you could come in and work with current students, uh, which is not uncommon. We do that all the time. We, we always have... Uh, students come in and work with other students, students that have graduate, graduated working with students that are currently studying. So that door's not closed. I'm just thinking the best way to do it would be to not rely on the facilities to get the assignment done, get the assignment done, and then afterwards we can assess the, the situation and see what the best way um, forward is. Uh, I've also seen over the past week, I've also seen this no detriment policy in action. Some of you might remember the no detriment policy. I'm sure you might have been asked to sign a, um, a petition and the university took on the no detriment policy. 
But at the point where we were signing, when you were signing the position, petition and it was it was coming through to us, nobody really knew what that meant and how that would look. But what I've seen over the past two or three weeks is that pro in the in process now, I've seen that process and I've seen that no detriment policy being used uh, in favour of students that were severely disadvantaged. And the way that we've used that as, as being quite honest and open and, you know, it's been, um, you know, cases, individual cases have been made uh, by uh, staff on behalf of students who felt that their practice had been uh, seriously, um, you know, uh, curtailed by the uh, the restrictions put in place. So I don't think that not having material recorded in the, stu in the studios is of a terrible detriment to you. It might, it, obviously, it might feel it's, you know you you obviously rightly feel that you know you paid all this money to use the facilities and you, you're you not getting to use the facilities that to me is a separate argument that is a valid argument but it's separate to what we're dealing with here because we can still meet the learning outcomes and complete this module and immersive audio uh, at home so again my advice would be to try and get the assignment submitted by friday the 4th of september along with final major project so let's have a look at this paperwork now. So this is just a brief update uh, on the module. You've already had the assignment briefs handed to you, but this is the update on them now as of today. So assignment one is your production portfolio, which is a 10 minute production portfolio. And you may use whatever material you like. So if you've already submitted a project, say for recording, uh, which you then mixed using the analog console and you'd now like to do a in-the-box software mix. You can do that. You can reuse material and that goes for immersive audio and it also goes for final major project as well. So if you've submitted a track for professional music production, you can also submit the same track for immersive audio, but obviously up mixed using an immersive audio format, binaural mixing you know, head, mixing for headphones, head tracking, whatever it is that you want to do, Atmos, although that's another thing. Um, but you can you can reuse material because you still meet the learning outcomes even if you reuse material. So um, you can submit uh, material you've already submitted and that can be original material, it can be your own material, it can be multi-track masters, you know, these classic tracks that you can download, Bob Marley, Queen, Def Leppard, all of that stuff that's freely available on the internet for educational purposes. You can obviously you can remix it for education. You can't obviously remix it and pass it off as your own work as such. But you can use multi-track masters by established artists, or you can use MIDI projects. It can be a mix. It doesn't have to be uh, one or the other. And I would still like you uh, like you to submit these as pro tools or logic projects obviously if you don't have pro tools or logic you can use i have reaper as well so you can use a reaper and i have audacity as well if you uh, if you choose uh, if that's if it is a problem to submit the song as a pro tools or logic project then you can submit as a stereo file if you like um, and obviously i can still get the information about how you mixed it uh, from assignment two, your portfolio analysis, but I would still like the tracks as Pro Tools or Logic where possible, so I can really, really get into see and see how you use the software and uh, get get it into the track on a track by track basis. So you can submit using Pro Tools or Logic. If you haven't got those, you can use something else. I mean, if you're using Ableton or something that's uh, not Pro Tools, Logic, Reaper or Audacity, then you'll have to email me and let me know what you're using because uh, I don't have every piece of software on my computer, so I might have to download a trial. Please make sure that you're not using third-party plugins that are um, in addition to the ones that you get with the software. So if you're not using stock Pro Tools or Logic Project, um, Logic Pro plugins, then you'll have to render the plugins in place. And you'll have to sort of tell me what you did in your production port portfolio, if you like. Uh, you can also leave notes on the track where you've rendered a track in place. So where you've applied plugins, you can then in your notepad in 
Pro Tools or Logic, you can add additional notes. So I hope that's clear on assignment one. Assignment two is your portfolio analysis. And I've made a slight change to this to make it a little bit more straightforward. And so for this part of the assignment, you will discuss how you achieved Olsinski's six elements of a mix as appropriate to your track. And that will be presented in the form of a screen captured, um, you know, uh, presentation like I'm doing now, this sort of thing, or a PowerPoint presentation or, or um, keynote presentation with a voiceover. So this six elements of a mix, um, you've heard this before, we used it in the recording module and I, I, I like using it in these cases because it can apply to different mixes rock pop you know hip-hop whatever it is so you would um, in your presentation discuss balance frequency range pan dynamics dimension and interest in your uh, portfolio analysis so that would be one per song so you would do you know obviously one separate videos for each of the songs that you submit you can go through it very methodically if you like. You can start with each, you know, go through it sort of chromatically as it's laid, laid out here. Start with balance, talk about frequency, range, pan. But of course, give the work some context as well. Don't just say, oh, well, I panned it left and I panned it right. What I'm really looking for is why you did that and what, what led you to do that. So was it something that you heard that you liked? Uh, was it something that you read that you liked? Uh, was it something that um, another producer or engineer does that you 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 really like? Um, so don't just say, "Well, I panned it left and I I EQ'd the vocals." Give me some real depth and, and analysis, and and try to give me a context by quoting examples of other work that you've you really like, and how you've tried to apply those techniques to your mix. I've also I've just uploaded. Olsinski's Mix and Engineers Handbook on under the Learning Materials tab on Blackboard. So if you want to get that information, you can download that book and it'll lay it out for you. And then when it comes to upload, uh, what I'd like you to do is if you are uploading a project, I'd like you to remove all unwanted files, so delete all unwanted files, so that you can get the, the zip file size down to a decent file size. And, and what you can do is you can, if your files aren't that large, you can either just zip everything together, so presentations and songs in one zip project, or you can do it on a project by project basis. So track one together with track one's presentation, zipped, track two, zip, or however you want to do it, but make it clear for me to see what you've done. So call it track one. Uh, by the name of the track but also make sure that you include your name or student number within the zip name because what happens if you don't do that if you just give it a song name when I download it I won't know whose project it is so make sure you include your your name or student number in the title so the zip fo folder could be renamed after your student name uh, student number and your name and then when I double click, it would then go into the track and the track would be named after the song, for example. And it's up to you how you want to send them to me. But after months of being sent stuff over file transfer, the uh, WeTransfer platform, although is restricted to two gigs on a free account, is the best, I think. Um, it's the quickest to upload and download and it's the most... Um, secure you can use Dropbox you can use OneDrive if you like Google Mail you can use G, uh, the, your Google Drive but the annoying thing about Google Drive is that you have to grant permissions and if you don't grant permissions you can't download it and I have to email you back and say can you give me permissions so I think WeTransfer is the best thing to use if you do um, use WeTransfer send it to my uni address don't forget it's stuart.jones3. Don't forget the three. Otherwise, it will go to a professor of uh, psychology in Treforest. And um, I'm sure he enjoy marking that. But uh, it's stuart.jones3. And once you've sent it, just send me a quick reminder or just uh, you know, an email to say I've sent you the files uh, because I only get a week to download. And at the moment, being bombarded by emails, 
you know, emails can slip through the system. So make sure you double check with me that I've got it and then I can download it and I can mark it. So that's uh, Airmo 4S17, Professional Music Production. This document will go up online on Slack. I'll put it on Blackboard as well. And that basically is that module. So I hope that makes it really manageable for you and you can get the work done. You can submit before Friday the 4th of September, if I haven't already said that. Um, and I think that's about it. Thank you.